they would go out of business completely. And I was like, okay, maybe this is really unlucky. They yeah. took visors and side view mirrors and Golden yeah. Bull. Actually, they can't call it the Golden Bull anymore. That was uh, trademarked by another cigar shop. This cigar, which has now only been dropped twice in history, will exist annually. That's nice. You, you called him up and you're like, hey, I can do this better. Can you give me your NFT, guys? Trust um, me, I was hoping you'd pay for it. It was a big invoice for me. Too. So you're I'm just as nervous you. as yeah. he was. Plus, I mean, yeah. yeah. Which, yeah. By the way, that, that alone is probably got a retail of about $5,000. 105 of the pale horse and that's yeah. it. Not happening again. That's the very few cigars. Worst case scenario, I own seven NFTs and you have to make me 420 boxes of anarchy every year. I say, are you okay with that? Not a bad what is up, my debaucherous friends? We're here with a very special video. We have a very unique project. It's not the first time it's done, but it's the best time it's done. We have the rock star, Pete Johnson, and we have Honest A from Smoke In, and we're going to bring you some very interesting stuff. Abe, how's it going? Very good. Very good. You got this awesome project that is a collaboration, a continuation of something you started over 10 years ago. How did you and Pete start talking about this uh, for this particular? I think I reached out to Pete in 2009. Um, oh, and I got that original cigar you sent me with your note on a post-it. I got to show it to you in my, in my office. I meant to pull it out. So... We were coming up on our 15th anniversary. So I had wanted to do something special. And I think right before then, you had just done your project in Hawaii, the T110, the, the first T110. run. What year was that? Was that 2008, 2008, uh, yeah, yeah. but 2009 was the ultimate release. Of right, right yeah. okay, so I knew about that. And, and I wanted to really do something special. And um, we, had, we had done some pretty cool things, just promotions and in-store stuff. So Pete was really the first guy I reached out to um, to do something for our 15th anniversary. And the, the original idea was we were going to do four cigars for that year, release one a quarter. And um, Pete was going to be the first, even though we dropped it in December of 2010, our anniversary year was 2011. So that was for the first quarter of 2011. Back, back when you guys started talking about this, like it was not unheard of, but very rare for retailers to do projects with manufacturers, right? Uh, it was done, maybe not to the extent it's being done today. Like I said, he had already had done probably two I or had, three. Yeah, I had done a couple already, but um, scale-wise, there was nothing like the Anarchy. And when we did the Anarchy Project scale, I mean, if you think about the T110, it en ended up being a total of a thousand boxes. That was a total? A total. Right, over over what given period? Uh, about, a, about a year total. Okay. But... Uh, Ultimately, it became bigger, but the Anarchy thing was my biggest project, and I actually was slightly intimidated by it because I, I was previously I was doing projects of, for a hundred boxes, two hundred boxes, but not a few thousand. <laughs> right, so so it I, ended I up being a big deal. When I asked Pete, he said, "How many?" I said, "I want to do fifteen hundred. So these our original projects all came in fifteen count boxes because it's our fifteenth anniversary. I remember him balking when I said. I think I asked him, "Are you sure?" <laughs> yeah, no, multiple times. He balked. Yeah, and um, I, I really, because I even think about where we were as a company back then. I mean, that order, the invoice I got from him, was kind of what I originally was my whole inventory for opening up a new store. <laughs> you know, earlier in my career. I mean, I was that was an intimidating invoice for me i mean i look back at that and i really say god i must have had some real balls yeah i mean it was a six digit invoice and i was you know i'd never seen one not for a single product for or, one order or, or even one manufacturer we were opening up stores with you know maybe a little bit more than that from everybody you know so um i i don't know i had a right vibe but i i had put together and, and you know i i have to commend pete because he kind of rolled with the punches but i had put together like a nine month marketing campaign so we had we had kind like of this <laughs> yeah yeah i mean literally like this it's been nine months but we had released some information on early and no one knew what was going on and i kind of um pete didn't know what my schedule of dropping information when he released the initial anarchy so i remember i got a call i was in pompano i got a call from you in nicaragua you were in nicaragua he's like what did you do yeah I'm like I, I, what do you mean he's my phone's been going off the hook. They want to know if I'm starting a rock band, if I'm making clothing, because we didn't tell anybody. We just dropped a little thing where um, the Tatuaje logo just kind of um, evolved into an anarchy symbol. 
and they just said join the anarchy and that was the original drop that we wow. put out there in the, in the good marketing in the yeah. worldwide <laughs> web and that was it so people started signing up for the anarchy not knowing what it was and then we had this really cool website that we built at the time which every week or two it had this rotating globe and a new red dot somewhere in the world would be pinging and when you went to that scene it was some anarchy photo of that region in the world but what nobody didn't know until after the fact was I was doctored somewhere in every one of those photos holding <laughs> yeah. an anarchy cigar in the crowd scene. So it was kind of really done very, very well. But, you know, ultimately, it's always in the cigar. You know, Pete had come up at that time. I think it was a, I don't think that shape had ever, I'd ever seen it before. It was kind of like a it was, it Figurado, was, but not Figurado with a. Yeah, it was kind of based off of the Avion mold. But I, I had the factory cut the head down a little bit and also cut the foot down a little bit. So it it had a different shape to the head instead of the anarchy shape is, you know, a little bit more pointed. And then, of course, with that, what for lack of better words, that giant honey bun that sits on top. Um, but the, the bubble on the on the foot, instead of having to light up a point, you're lighting up more of that right at the edge of the it's bubble. It's all curved in, yeah. Um, so it was something new. I mean, it was definitely something that we were able to do before in the factory by doing other figurados, but this one was very unique to its uh, to its design. When so. you brought that to your roller, which she's like, "What are you doing to me?" <laughs> no, it was uh, it, it was actually in Nicaragua, and the chief of production kind of understood what I wanted right away because you know knowing the mold and knowing the size that we used as a base, it was easy to take it to a, a chopper and or a chavetta and just chop down the end and chop off the top and. When I told them about the honey bun, yeah, that's where they were like, <laughs> I know they're just a, just a long rabito that just keeps on going in a circle, <laughs> which they've done it before in the sense of they know how to do it, but they've never really made it for production. So right, like a it was a little bit of extra there. work. Yeah, um, yeah, but you know, like when the factory looks at me when I tell them to do like a hundred of them, they're like, "No, you're crazy." But if I tell them to do was it 15,000 15 at the times time? 15? But it was actually more than that. No, it was, no, was 22,500 originally. Right. The first part the first part of the order. Yeah. It became bigger than that. They are like, we have to do how many of those? <laughs> so it, it, it ended up working out great, um, but it made it unique to what Anarchy is too. So if, if you look at the Anarchy project, it carries on from the original Anarchy to the Apocalypse to the Chaos, and they always have that same signature cap. Which is kind of fun. Well, if you're going to put that that intense marketing that you did into it, because a website like that for 2011 is that's pretty impressive for today, let alone back then. Well, what's what's even funnier? So you have to go all. I out. didn't have the team, so we're, I'm working with like you know I didn't you know we didn't have the resources then we we had today. So I'm, I had a decent web guy in my office. I'm like, this is what I wanted to do, and he's looking at me. He's like, what? Yeah, this globe's got to turn, and I need to pinpoint every day. But we made it happen, and I even went down to when we finally told people it was a cigar. You know, a few months before the release, I actually went met him in Miami, seven in the morning, before he went to Nicaragua, and I'm gonna find it. But we did this footage where he was doing like he was at the um, El Rey de los Habanos factory down there, and we were acting like it was a mob scene outside, and he was doing like this, you know, like this could be the end of the world video and it's anarchy and but i was all blacked out so i was your and you also heard like my voice being like changed right so you couldn't you couldn't tell who it was yeah originally no one knew uh who was on the on the footage and when, then eventually, when we first yeah. when we first let it out there but you you know it, it was it really was a perfect storm of just getting people excited about something and once again if you don't have a cigar that ultimately delivers that's what i'm saying the cigar has failure. to be super unique super. and great to live up to the hype of the marketing you, you think you ever missed your calling as like a marketing firm <laughs> well that's why i wanted to, that's what i started studying when i was in schools advertising and marketing that was always kind of been my interest growing up but it's just cool because i've been blessed to be able to use so i had my own graphics company for a while before yeah. i moved here so I, I just kind of been able to incorporate all the kind of things over the years that I was into and I kind of like doing into what I do every day, which is kind of a blessing. It's kind of nice, you know, I get to use my creative side and, and whatnot. So we 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 released the cigar on Black Friday. Yeah. 
and this is like our archaic website. Like, I mean, <laughs> before we even knew what we were doing with the website, we had no experience in what crashing a website was. It never happened. We'd, our website wasn't even a year old, I think. Our, I think we really launched our website in mid to late 2008. So it was like a year and a half old. We still didn't know what we were doing and it crashed our website. And, and this, and we went, we went on sale literally at midnight. I remember being in the store in midnight um, with the laptop on, just watching and seeing what was going on. But um, it sold out. So here I was, I got this largest invoice I had ever gotten. And, you know, Pete has this on, on terms and we sold enough. Trust me, I was hoping you'd pay for it. <laughs> it was a big invoice for me too. So you're just as you. nervous yeah. as he was. Plus, I mean, yeah. yeah. And you're both hoping he can pay for it. <laughs> literally. Literally. I mean, I remember my office guy when he saw this bill, he was, uh, I think there's a typo here. I'm like, oh, no. That, that's, those zeros are there. We had sold enough before the bill was due to cover the bill. Wow. Yeah. And then I got, so the cigars were dropped in December, December 10th. We had a big party, bought in a used, what was it? A, it was, was an a, Isuzu Rodeo. Isuzu Rodeo. <laughs> we bought in a Isuzu a Rodeo from a junkyard. We let people take turns with sledgehammers, breaking the car up. That's awesome. Yeah, it was all spray painted and We spray painted. Our, we actually spray painted the whole shopping center. We put bullet holes in our neighbor's windows. Like, yeah, we got a little insane. That, that, was a, that was a great event because it, it really, it for lack of better words, it made a lot of noise. Yeah. And people were literally on top of the car with a sledgehammer. Oh, yeah. Destroying it. People footage. actually, I know people that still have pieces of the car. Really? They yeah. saved it. They yeah. took visors and side view mirrors and yeah. So yeah, we were, we were signing car parts <laughs> that night. We were. And I think it got, I think Jose and a bunch of people and, and they were starting to try to tip the car over. And this is, it is in the courtyard of my shopping center. Yeah. I was like, okay, guys, stop. <laughs> we're not rolling the car over. In the shopping center, but it was uh, very exciting. We had these. Big, you had actual anarchy happening. We had anarchy. We happening. did. <laughs> we had these barrels with the fake fires, you know, blowing, you know, all throughout the courtyard. It was it was a great event. So then someone from Playboy magazine reached out to me in December. Um, they had heard about the cigar, and they asked if I could send them two boxes. So, you know, Playboy asked you to send two boxes. You send two boxes. We sent them two boxes of anarchy, and I, and I called P. I'm like. I think they're going to write about this cigar. He's like, well, what did you do? I'm like, uh, nothing. Somebody called. And you know, when, you, when you're in that situation at first, you think it's a prank. Right. Right. I mean, somebody's, but no, we sent two, two boxes out. And um, in the March issue in 2011, they had this little half page story. And and I think it may have featured a couple cigars, three total, but not your grandfather's cigar. And there was a write up about anarchy. And when this happened in December and we saw how the pre-sales were going, I really reached out to Pete. I'm like, well, you know, I think we're gonna need more. <laughs> so we actually put in another purchase order for another 1,500, 15 count boxes. So in, in, in 2010, our footprint, I think at the time was five retail stores, maybe four, five retail stores. Our web presence was only a year old. We weren't doing Nobody no. was doing online sales in. Oh, I mean, there were people, but not us. I yeah. mean, we were, we were late in the game. We still had a catalog. <laughs> Catalogs are still popular. So, I mean, it was really unprecedented to go through 3,000 boxes for, I, I don't think it would, I, I think it's hard to happen today at any level. Even the big box retailers online. For it to happen to us back then in 2010, without the social media, without all the tools that we have today, is really remarkable. And Pete and I joke about it because I go hands down, this was the most historic single store release in the history of our industry. I agree. There was a a, a blogger group. We won't say their name, but they <laughs> they listed the most successful like single store releases. Mm -hmm. And Anarchy wasn't on it. I, I don't think it was single store releases. It was like the top 50 great things that happened in our industry. Oh, that's what it was. So it was like a top 50 conglomerate. And Pete and I, and that came out, what, five years ago? Something like that. And we still joke about like, how did you not mention Anarchy? Yeah. You know? These are friends of ours, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because I think it really, hands down, and I don't know if it'll ever be beaten as a single did store. Did they get a box? 
No. They weren't around. <laughs> they weren't around. Oh, they okay. weren't around. They're probably one of the biggest guys so out there So it's probably just day. like they're FOMO. They're upset. They're like, no, no, no. no, no we didn't no, get to no, smash no, the car. No, we didn't no, get to smoke the cigar. No. They, they, I don't think they were around when it originally launched. I think the best part about the, the event, though, is that a lot of other cigar company people came to the event. Like, there were really? sales reps from other companies, yeah. and they were just standing around going, what the hell is going on? Because they were seeing Abe's register ring. First of all, yeah. But then they're looking at just everybody getting involved with this whole crazy anarchy party, and they're like, "Holy shit! I can't believe this can be done." It was a new thing. I you mean, it was CD. definitely new for for the industry when when people look at if you go back and you you think yeah, there was no social media. Yeah, I mean, there was like Facebook, but not for cigars. But no, but Facebook honestly, wasn't really. Like, it was still Facebook a college thing. Facebook was still at the time. still yeah. young at that time. Right. It wasn't. It was there, but it wasn't popular yet. Right. And if you think about the way Instagram and TikTok and all these other things work now, just to just to market of what you had with a website. I love how we called it the World Wide Web. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, when we do projects like these, there's guys you have a lot of fun working with mm-hmm. who get excited as much as we do about stuff, and there's guys who just do the work and deliver. So working with Pete's always a lot of fun because he'll get excited and he'll start texting me ideas. I mean, so, I mean, that's the humidor for the NFT project. Yeah. I had nothing to do with that. He kept texting me <laughs> pictures. Right, we're totally skipping over. We went from how this was created. Now you're already talking about what's in the NFT and haven't even mentioned that there's this Editing. is an NFT project. <laughs> well, you know, that's, that's you're the host. All right. So you can always edit this, you know. Yes. <laughs> that's what magical editing is for. You know, I hate that word. That's a, it's like the F word in our industry. Really? Just fix it in post. But, um, <laughs> so, so you guys got together. Why? Because this is, this is not, uh, that was your 15 year anniversary in 2011. This is not kind of an anniversary. Why did you choose to do this one this year? I uh, mean, the NFT project? Mm-hmm. The only rhyme or reason was, um, I, and it's funny because Pete and I joke and, you know, I'm not one of these guys that understand the, the metaverse and the Bitcoin and the NFT yeah. and all that. So myself, and I'm sure many people in our industry was close, closely watching the LFD release last year of yeah. the NFT to kind of see how it would work. And we chose this year because after I saw what they did, so I always look at things as how it would affect me. People talk about the experience when they come in to smoke in because I want to create the experience I want as a consumer, what I would expect, right? Yeah. So the same thing when I looked at the NFT pro- LFD project as, as an NFT, and, and listen, kudos to them, because, you know, everybody was like, okay, this is insane, and, it, you know, it ended up being successful. Yeah, a lot, when they announced it, a lot of people rolled their eyes. Oh, yeah. And then it was a massive success. Most people don't understand, when they don't understand something, right, it doesn't seem like it's logical or... Honestly, make, I still don't get it. I don't get it, but <laughs> what I did understand was the tangible side of it. Mm-hmm. And it was really funny because I really reached out to Pete and I said, I, I want to get on this quick because I didn't want a string of NFTs or people trying this event before I was able to get my version of it out. Right. Right. Because. So you, you saw the LFD one. You're like, if I did this, I would do it different. I mean, it's kind of how many of our successful yeah. things. I, it's, it's very hard to have an original idea off the bat these yeah. days. Right. And um, but I've been very good at my career at seeing something and said, OK, that could be a lot better or. You know, even like multi-vendor events, you know, our event, The Great Smoke, draws thousands and thousands of people. I wasn't the guy who created a multi-vendor cigar event. Right. But I went to a lot, and you see how people do things, and you're like, man, this would be really cool if we did, if this. We did this or they had done this. And that's what I what I did with that, because as a retailer, I wanted to be excited and see a value. So that was really what we created with this NFT project. We are following the NFT world in a yeah. non-fungible token that someone's going to own in a blockchain format. And for a lot of people, that could be a very exciting investment. So this is a legit NFT like LFDs. It's connected to the blockchain. There can only be one verified owner at any given time. Yeah. Oh, no. It's it's actually done through the same people. I mean, uh, John Carney was actually very helpful in helping and, and giving us some contacts to do it That's right. That's nice. You, you called him up and you're like, hey, I can do this better. Can you give me your NFT, guys? It um, was literally <laughs> the whole LaFleur team. Like he, they, Lido and, and Tony actually reached out to me if you need help. This and I go, industry- it's all really Abe when it comes to this stuff because I'm clueless when it comes to it. Yeah. But they're like, well, if you guys need help, let us know because we've, we've been through the process and, and, and Carney's been helping out a lot. That's really nice. Yeah. This industry is more like that than people 
yes. realize. Yeah. I mean, there, there really, there's way more stories about people helping other people, competitors, yeah. you know, than there is, you know, guys having issues in, in this industry. One of the reasons why I love the industry so much. So, yeah, John was very helpful. The stuff that I don't understand, Pete is not into. There's like 10 people in the world that understand blockchain right now. <laughs> it's just I think one thing that, you know, Abe said to me when he called me up, he says, did you watch it? And I said, yeah, I, I saw it. I don't understand it. And he goes, I think there's an, another way to do it. I have to, before I finish my career in the cigar industry, this is what he said, kind of based, not verbatim, but I need to try my own stab at this. If I can't do it better, then, then I... I should just stop thinking about things like this, but I need to try it once. Yeah. And that's really where it came up with. I looked at him, I said, I'll make the cigar. Because <laughs> like, I have no clue what it's all about. But yeah. he, you're like, I know how to make cigars. I'll do that part. <laughs> yeah, that 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 thing's easy for me. But uh, when it comes to the creativity, I mean, if you end up seeing everything that they put together for this yeah. project, it's it's pretty impressive. I, I got to play in, in someone else's playground. So it was fun for me to put this together, but I had to rely on the factory to execute it, which they did, thank God. Yeah, actually, this just made it in. Like I had a vision, but they had to execute it, and they yeah. did. It, I was, I'm still blown away by it, but uh, even my wife said, can we make one more just to put in the house? <laughs> yeah. I said, no, we can't. <laughs> no, this is art. It's a yeah. one-off art piece. So let's talk about that. So the thing that uh, LFD did right is they made a... Rare, the Golden Bull. Actually, they can't call it the Golden Bull anymore. That was uh, trademarked by another cigar shop. Oh, so now it's know. now it's called, uh, I believe, the Andalusian Bull, the Golden. Oh, okay. they, they had to re-trademark it. I just read that last night. Didn't, I didn't even hear about that. <laughs> it was it was marketed as the Golden Bull, and the cool part was if you got one of the seven NFTs, you had the only, exclusive rights to order that one Golden Bull, and no one else can order it. So that they did that right. That was really cool. What are you doing to make it more unique to you? So what what excited me as a retailer when I was designing and putting together this project with Pete, and what the nice part is, is when you work with someone like Pete, he, he trusts me. Because I understand when you, when you build something that you have a name, right? So that's a, something that's very conscious in my head, you know, that Tatuaje, this brand name, this historic name in our industry, I'm using it. So I'm very cautious and don't want to create anything that, like I would with my own name that would not be something he'd be proud of. Right. Right. So I wanted to do something that would be exciting to me as a retailer. The cigars, look, it's a little bit self-serving because Pete will tell you, I probably talk to him every year or two about making more anarchy. Yeah. <laughs> it's literally the number one cigar. We still, till today, get emails. Do you have any of these? Because while it's been around in our minds for 12 years, there are guys who are just hearing about it for the first time. They've gotten into cigars a year or two ago, came across an article, and they'll reach out to us, and you have um No, man, I wish I did. I mean, you're probably going to get pissed at this, but I never heard of the anarchy until you approached me about this project. Yeah, but, you know, we also talked yesterday. There was, You know, you're kind of one of the new guys on the yes. cigar scene, right? So we were talking about a lot of history that you were unfamiliar with last night. When we a were lot. Set up. Right. A lot. <laughs> so when you have guys like, you know, we're the old guard. I was just talking about this the other day, and we've become the old guard in our industry. You also have to remember there are guys continually getting into our culture right. and into the cigar we industry. We just experienced a new boom. A lot of new smokers that know nothing about the industry. It's always going to happen on some level. So that's why Anarchy's kind of, for me, was the perfect... You, for me, you, you have to have a cigar, first off, that this would have worked. And I'm not sure there was any other cigar that we've kind of done a project over the years with that would have worked for this kind of project other than Anarchy. It's been around for so long. People are still looking for it. People are always hunting it down. It's one of those collectible cigars. Yeah, secondary market. There. Yes. Secondary market on it is still pretty big. If you can find original anarchies, people are paying a lot of money for them. Yeah. yeah. Probably more than what they're going to spend on the, the NFT. Right. <laughs> I mean, I mean, <laughs> I've heard stories where people are paying upwards of you know, $50 and $60 a cigar. Oh, just easy. because they wanted to try Say 50, something. 60? Yeah, 50 or 60. Yeah. That's, think, that's a lot. Yeah. That's no, lot. I think I've seen them go for actually higher. Because we, we we have a rare and vintage room. So I think at one point, we were selling them in our rare and vintage room for like 30 or $40. And people were buying them from us. Yeah. Because they, they were only able and to buy selling them. Yeah. And they were taking them to the <laughs> secondary market and selling them from us, from our rare and vintage room. So. All right. So you can get the anarchy again now. So yeah. Because so, of this NFT project. So now what, for me, What's really the most exciting thing as a retailer is 
this cigar, which has now only been dropped twice in history, will exist annually. Annually? Yeah. Every year. There'll be anarchy now cigars every year. Small quantities, though. It's a, what, a total of 400? 20 400? boxes total yeah. annually. Annually. Across every, you know, NFT owner. Yeah. So, for me, that's a very exciting thing because I remember when Pete first had the Monster Series and he dubbed these guys Unlucky 13. And they were unlucky because they got, you know, a, a nice, a, you know, shipment of the Monster Series that year, but it was never going to be enough for the demand because he only selected 13 retailers in the whole country. Yeah. And I remember the year we got selected, our phones Phone calls. didn't stop ringing from all over the country. Yeah. And I, I heard there was one retailer who said no to you. No. Yeah, there was actually, I can't remember who it was at the off the top of my head, but uh, there was one retailer that said, I, I would rather not because they they heard that they were just going to get bombarded with phone calls. Yeah. and Are they still in business? No, they're still in business. Are they? Okay. They're still in business. But, but they've been uh, kicking themselves for quite a few years. I mean, years. I don't know. <laughs> but, I, but I have ultimately dubbed the Unlucky 13 because it became so unlucky for certain retailers that I had, I think it was like a, a retailer every year would drop completely. They would close down their shop or they would go out of business completely. And oh, I was really? like, okay, maybe this is really unlucky. <laughs> so it, it became like this weird kind of joke with internally, like, okay, we're gonna ask these retailers if they want this project. If they don't, we're gonna have to go on to the next person in line. But yeah, we had one guy that said, ah, man, I don't know if I can handle Sounds like it's gonna be calls. a lot of work. Well, yeah, yeah, it was really about, he couldn't, he didn't have the ability to to Field. ship and pack and that was the biggest thing for retailers like do you have the ability to do this yeah i remember one retailer he got a total of 50 boxes and he, he got like 250 phone calls that's so. what the dilemma would be for me this is like doing the unlucky 13 quarterly now right so part of the nft package when you when you if, if you're one of the lucky people that actually ends up owning one of these nfts is you have the right to get 15 boxes of these for for you quarterly you know, I designed this as because I'm a retailer. Mm -hmm. As a as this will probably attract mostly retailers, as we saw in the LFD project, consumers can bid on it. It's an open bidding process, right? Yeah. So there could be a Tatuaje fan out there who will get involved in the bidding process. But I literally designed this as as a retailer play because there's the value in having these cigars to your store every quarter and having consumers and fans and long-time Tituahe lovers being able to find you as a retailer because only seven retailers in the country will well, have... Well, six, because like you said, well, I'm, you're doing I'm something seven. that you want that excites you, so you're you're one of the owners. You're going to own number seven. Well, there was no way I wasn't going to have yeah. one of these NFTs. And he can't bid on them either. Right. So yeah. <laughs> the, the initial thing was I was going to try to bid on it like everybody else because I would have wanted two or three, to yeah. be honest with you. <laughs> I really would have. It wasn't until after the fact that we kind of said, because I was trying to be ethical about it, right? I'm just going to go through the bidding process like everybody else. Yeah. And then I said, wait, I, I really can't do that because it's kind of unethical like for me to- Like insider trading kind of. It's kind of yeah. for me to bid, the deck. like I'm yeah. jacking up the price. So we just figured that the, the cleanest way would be just to, as, as somebody who's been part of this project and brand from day one and really helped work with Pete to put this together, that we would just own one and then auction off the other six. But so, there'll be seven retailers, you know, yes. in the country that will get- Smoke in. And, and, and maybe maybe individuals are gonna win the bids. It could be an individual. So, so there could be, be like three shops that have this. It I was be. actually recently at a, at a charity event and uh, one of the guys that was with, with us, who was a big Tontawai collector said, I'm gonna bid on one. And I was like, really? He goes, yeah, I want one. It could happen. So now where it gets more exciting, right? We have the, the you know, so one of the things I did differently too is we we hired a, who I've done work with over 20 years. He's a local artist and um, he's, he's done work with us, like I said, on different projects over the years. Uh, his name is Brian Peterson. And we created seven unique pieces of art. So it wasn't going to be seven of the same NFTs or cigar. We kind of created anarchy theme art. So each NFT is completely unique and different from all, you know, between all seven Let's of them. Let's talk about that. Because you can see five of the pieces around us right now. Yeah. They're amazing. They're awesome. You're getting number seven, which is that one. That one. Right? And that also comes with... So that so this is where the package is neat. So 
the art that's incorporated in the NFT, we reached out to a couple companies that we were very excited. In fact, I really didn't think one was gonna happen. We kind of wanted to make this a collectible set. And so the NFT comes with that humidor to your right. And now that humidor has 75 cigars in it. Right. So it has 60, which in design- Originally it was supposed to be 60. Yes, originally <laughs> it was supposed to be 60. And when Pete was like, wait, wait a second. I'm like, does that hold 60 or 75? He goes, it was supposed to be 75, right? I said, like, the press release was 60. He goes, well, it's 75 now. Yeah. So everybody got an extra 15 I, cigars. Uh, I wasn't calculating my uh, my plan correctly. And I, I was like, I really want to have a drawer at the bottom that displays 15 single cigars loose. That way, if someone wants to go into their humidor, they can grab a single cigar and not touch the bundles that are in there. And I realized I wasn't making 60, I was making 75. <laughs> yes. So there's 60 of the original blend wrapper Anarchy cigar. And then there's a small pack of 15 Pale Horse editions, which is made with a completely different lighter wrapper. Yeah. So that's what comes in that humidor alone. Um, so the, the Pale Horse is the only way you can get it is by it winning, winning, is winning. I've never seen, I've never seen one to date. A pale horse? Not in the original anarchy, anarchy shape. Like we said, we did it in that small no, yeah. project. We did chaos, but as an original anarchy cigar. So this is the first ever. That's the first I've seen. Yeah. And, but you can't reorder those. No, no. It comes as part of the package of the humidor as a extra bonus collectible piece. So with the NFT, you get to reorder the Anarchy, but the Pale Horse is like one and done. Right, that humidor is one and done. It comes with it. This, These are the boxes that they can reorder 15 of um, quarterly. Yeah. 15, 15 count boxes quarterly. So we reached out to one of my opinion, one of the makers of the most exquisite lighters I've ever seen in the wor world. Pete has worked with them. We reached out to ST DuPont. Yeah. And uh, it was a very interesting working with them out of Paris, going back and forth. They, they, I, I happened to have a lucky day where they were here on a meeting and um, uh, they were very excited about it, but their concern was, could they do it? So they started to work on this right away. So every one of these NFT dish editions comes with a one of one ST DuPont Line 2 lighter that has the matching art on the lighter. They are gorgeous pieces. And I don't know myself personally, it may have happened, but I don't know of the one of one DuPont. Um, they're all engraved NFT one of one yeah. underneath. Um, and they all match the art of the NFT that you own. So now you have this humidor. Um, you're gonna have this NFT art. And I like, I wanted to make the canvases because once again, me being old school, I didn't understand the coolness of owning a blockchain pizza. I want to hang something in my office, Yeah, <laughs> right? I want something tangible. So. Part of my deal was every one of these projects would get these beautiful canvas pieces they could hang in their home, in their man cave, that it, all the art will match. So now you have this beautiful ST DuPont line two lighter with matching art. We reached out to the fine people at Zycar and Quality Importers. Um, each set comes with a matching crystal art ashtray, a, a matching yeah, crystal ashtray with the matching art to it. And something that I began working with Zycar people about a year and a half ago, which these seven cutters are the first ones to have been made in the country. Um, so it's a brand new product that's unreleased by Quality Importers. It's unreleased. It's a Zycar version. It's a, it's, it was a natural evolution. Shocking it took too long, but they're going to be Zycar cutters that are perfect cut. So instead of having the traditional hole that you could put a cigar all the way through, the other side is closed off. So it's a perfect cut Zycar one and Zycar two cutters that'll be released. So the NFT edition comes with a Zycar XI1 cutter, the metal version with the matching NFT art. So it's a, a really impressive collection of sets. Now, what the winners of the bids wanna do with their lighters and that humidor and the can, it's free to them, yeah. but the blockchain NFT art is what they will own. And now that's what gets the 15 boxes every quarter. And if they transfer it or sell it or do whatever they want, then that, the right to those 15 cigars boxes every quarter follows the digital NFT art. Right, so whatever your bid is on this, if you if they just go like people are calling off the phone, you could resell this NFT to someone else so they can now order the Anarchy cigars and they could probably make their money back. Well, that's how the NFT works. I mean, it, I mean, 
the, the, the ownership of the blockchain of the digital art. What added value for me as a retailer, on top of all the accoutrements that come with the package was, is that I know that I will be able to get 60 boxes a year yeah. from my retail store of the cigar that I think is probably one of the most historic releases our industry has seen. You know I mean? And honestly, as a single store release, but really on any level, it really did change the way store releases kind of really grew, became really popular after I think a lot of people saw the success of it. I think a lot of manufacturers started, who maybe weren't interested in doing these kind of projects, saw the success that yeah. we had and said, oh, well, maybe we kind of need to start doing this with some of our good retailers. I think it changed the way right. single store releases were viewed you know, throughout the whole industry. And now this is going to change that yet again. So this is kind of like a make or break. Like if this works really well, a lot of other retailers and manufacturers are going to start jumping on NFTs also. It's not that easy. Yeah. <laughs> it, it really isn't because once again, you have to have the cigar that has the leg. Like I said, in, in yeah, I don't think I could do it. Uh, you know, maybe one other one, but this was without a doubt the one in my head that said, if we do it, this is, this is the one yeah. that we have to do it with. It's hard to do something, but as I kept talking about what I wanted to do, whatever, he understood the cigar side value of it, right? Yeah, so I that, still, I don't have any idea about the <laughs> NFT thing still. And that's what I kept on saying over the phone was like, yeah, I, I don't get it. <laughs> but so it's, the it's, cigar part's easy. It's pretty simple. So the blockchain is an encryption code that's trillions of letters long per character. Yeah. So you can't fake it. So whenever somebody buys that, if somebody tries to fake it, the blockchain instantly says that's a fraud. Yeah. You can never recreate this again. So it's it's just a hardcore safety measure See, on and that. I still don't get it. No. <laughs> what he doesn't understand is we both heard that a hundred times. Like yeah. I've heard that definition, but but I don't have to get it. What I can understand is what's of value to me as a retailer. Right. And you know, I, I you know, really once again, kudos to the LaFleur people who really understood the technology, saw it through, and we have implemented a lot of their hard work on the technical side of it. You know, I mean, yeah. how the blockchain is going to work, how the ownership is going to work, how the auction is going to work. So, you know, kudos to them. They, they paved the road for us to have done this project. When somebody uh, does win a bid, how do you verify it on your end that they have the correct? There's a third party energy. company that handles all that. OK, they handle the auction. This is what they do. This is their living. So they handle the auction. They handle the the, the, the transference, the coding. In fact, they even reached out to our artist because he had to sign paperwork about, you know, that we have the right to use this art yeah. and the process in which he made the art. So they handle all the hard technical stuffs of making it all happen. So basically, when the bidder wins, yes, they eventually go through their process of getting the funds. They send us the funds and then we would deliver then the all the tangibles other than the NFT that would come from them. So when you win, you get the ability to buy more Anarchy cigars quarterly. You get this one-off humidor that says on the side, uh, NFT edition. And which the, has, that comes in a wooden box, which he's numbered one through seven, because yeah. there'll only be seven of those humidors ever made. Yeah, each humidor is numbered on the corner. Oh, on the, the outside. The, and the, the outside box yeah. is actually numbered to match the, uh, the inside humidor. Which also comes with a one-off pale horse in a size that no one's ever had 15 before. Fifteen of those. Fifteen of those. Yeah. Never to be made again. Never to be made again. No. You get <laughs> these two foot by four foot canvases that are all one-off pieces with these gorgeous torn edges in a floating frame. You get the one-off ST DuPont lighter. Line two. You Which, get... By the way, that, that alone is probably got a retailer of about $5,000. Right. That's the reality at, with at, at, at SD DuPont. At a that's minimum. That's not being collectible, right? Yeah. That's just at a minimum. Right. SD like, DuPont just does not do stuff like this. And one of, one of ones, I mean, I have a one of one SD DuPont that they hand carved at the trade show with yeah. my logo one year. But that was because there was a guy there hand carving my logo into the lighter. That's why it's only one of one. But they just don't do this. Right. This, like you said, this is, as far as you know, the only commissioned one of one art pieces they've ever I've done. I've never seen it done. So, yeah. I mean, we were so excited. And a lot of this was an evolution process. So when we originally started talking about doing the NFT, it was literally just, I think, the canvas, which I always wanted from the beginning, right? I wanted something tangible yeah. to hand somebody. Yeah. I own this art. Yeah, I own it in a digital format, but this hangs on my wall. 
So it was just going to be the canvas, the humidor, and the cigars. And the rest just kind of evolved throughout the time we were working on the project. And then, then you get the Zycar XI-1 Perfecto Cutter, which has not been released yet. Right. Which is a one-of-one on one, one, of one piece. And then you get the Crystal Ashtray. Yeah. That is a lot. It's, it, it, look, it's a big package. And we originally talked about launching this whole campaign in the spring, early summer. Yeah. And of course, just like everything else in this industry, everything. It was really only about the cigar originally. Abe made it a package. I mean, he made it something bigger than what it, it was originally thought about. I mean, if you look at the way LFD did it, which is great, they what he said, they paved the way for, for what he's doing here with the, the Anarchy Edition. But he's given this value to it, that this package deal, basically, where you get something really tangible and really that you can hold on to, or you could sell it for a lot of money off to the side. Because again... They don't, they don't need to keep these. Whoever wins these auction items, they don't need to hold on to those items. Right. They, can, they need to hold on to the NFT. Yes. This, they can do whatever they want with it. So if they decide they want to sell it, they can. I'm sure Abe's going to be in line to buy a few of them, though. Well, you can sell the <laughs> NFT also. You yes, can yeah, you can sell the NFT, yeah. right. But the NFT is the only thing that comes with the repurchasing. Everybody right. else is a one and done. So, you know, a, a, you know for me, I, I, like, I don't think I'm going to sell any of mine, to be honest with you. Or I'm just going to price it so stupidly that no one will buy it. I mean, and if someone does come in and offer me it, then it's going to put me in a predicament. Because once again, I only have one set. And, and yeah, set, Abe's you know, not a small retailer. And to think about his allocation that he's doing is 60 boxes per year. It's not a lot for no. someone. I mean, 60 boxes is a, is a daily allotment for a guy like Abe. Yeah. So to do 60 boxes for a whole year, it's very little production. And it makes would, it easy for the factory for me, though. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and normally I would complain about something like that, but you know what 60 boxes a year is? Hmm. 60 boxes more than I was getting every year. <laughs> That's the way I look at something yeah. like that. Because literally, it's a conversation we have every couple of years. Like, um, yeah, in the cigar no. industry, any any project you start has to start a couple of years before the cigar ever comes out. So the whole process, probably from thinking and creating to finally end, is when we work in our marketplace, it's typically a year and a half. Easily. Yeah. I mean, it took me this long just to put this together. Yeah. So, yeah. and we've been talking since last fall. We were talking literally right around when LaFleur was talking about it. And, yeah. You know, and we I, didn't I, even know we were going to have this today. It was that close to the. <laughs> it, it landed uh, on Thursday in Miami. And I actually had to, I was out of town and someone actually had to deliver it to my house because otherwise I wouldn't have it this morning. Wow. Yeah. It's, it's one of those things, but um, we're very proud of it. And like I said, the delay in, us getting this all done kind of worked out because, um, you know, our plan now is to showcase a complete set at Peace Booth at a trade show um, this this year. So uh, retailers can come and actually, because no matter, you know, how we put the pictures up there, it's not as impressive as looking at this stuff yeah. live. So when, be- when we were opening these canvases last night, we were all just like in awe, like blown away. Like these look way better than we ever thought thought they would it really is i texted him pictures but the stuff looks way cooler yeah so pete will have in his booth at the trade show a display of a complete set not matching uh various components so people can see what the different art looks like on each of them and then we'll have it there digitally so people can see what each set will look like but i'm excited i'm excited just to have honestly i'm not lying this cigar in the marketplace now every year that will exist yes because this was my micro blend number one you know, literally the baby that birthed it all. So to be able to have it and, and me, like the way I'd like to do things exciting, I will pretty much probably come up with very creative ways to do something with the 50, 15 boxes that I receive every quarter. Do you do you have a date for the auction yet? It, it'll be in August. In August? Yeah, it's not sometime. finalized yet, but it'll be sometime in August. So this is the first where everyone's getting... Like you... Like, it was announced last year that this was going to happen, but nobody knew what it was going to entail. This is the first time anyone's heard of what it's, it's going to totally entail. When they see this video, probably. And, then, mean, we'll, and then at PCA is the next time they're going to get a good look at it. Yeah, well, we're going to release a press release, which is also complicated because I have four companies involved in the press release now. We have Tatuaje, SD DuPont, Quality with Zycar and our company to, to coordinate this press release, so we'll get out there. It'll probably get out to the public probably when we drop this video. Um, with the footage of the projects, and then there'll be a showing for anybody who wants to 
see what the set will look like. They could do it while they're at Vegas at the trade show by stopping at the Tatuaje booth. So I think the Tatuaje booth is going to be a very jumping <laughs> booth this year, not just for this project alone. You know, Pete's got some very exciting things. So I think it's going to be a really happening place at the trade show this it's year. It's going to be a little added uh, stress to the trade show for me. Because <laughs> I already have a lot of stuff that I'm working on that I'm displaying at the show. And to add this into it, is going to be one of those extra things that I have to worry about because I'm really kind of more worried about. I told him I was more worried about this thing getting stolen, yeah, or lost during shipping. Um, I know he's got the same issue with the lighters, which are impossible to come by to replace if one were to get lost. So right, they're, they're priceless. Like yeah. nobody knows the value of these lighters at all. Well, <laughs> the canvases. God forbid we fall or drop one. Right, I can have another canvas made, but. Getting another SD DuPont lighter made is not not happening. No, 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 not an option. I mean, it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy for them or us. So, I'm really that's that's the one piece I'm traveling with that I'm very scared about losing. So I'm I'm literally taking my own, yeah. my own edition to showcase area. That way, God forbid it. That's the same thing with this. I'm Vegas. I'm bringing number seven, which is actually the one number that Abe will be acquiring, and. God forbid something happens during transit. I can have the factory remake one. They won't be happy about it, but they'll make one more for me to replace it. Yeah. But I want to keep it intact for sure. It's scary. <laughs> it's, it's logistics you don't think about, right? Now getting these things to be. Because I went to TSA. Because I, I said, look, this is a work of art lighter. I mean, I show on the bottom, it's numbered. No one's lighting this, right? Mm -hmm. I, I, I wanted to carry it on with me. And the lady I showed it to was like, oh yeah, it won't be a problem. She was like, is it a torch? I'm like, no. No problem. Let me go ask my supervisor. She went ask the supervisor because like, absolutely not. So within their own organization. So then it comes down to <laughs> whoever's working that day in the airport. Yeah. So I'm not going to carry God it forbid out. they're a cigar smoker watching this right now and they see you come literally. through the line. They're like, Abe, hey, you're getting the pat down, buddy. No, literally. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm not going to I'm not going to carry it on. But, uh, you know, I am going to get it there. It's going to be. <laughs> prayer and luck but i think we'll be fine you know you just plan for the worst look even when we talk about this project because you know the last thing you ever want to do when you're doing something like this and especially you know the floors were successful yeah right so i you know my goal is how do i make it really exciting to me as a retailer and you know the last thing you ever want to do is kind of not be successful at something it's never anybody's plan a yeah so pete was asking me he's like you know what, what, what happens if it just doesn't go you know, whatever. I said, well, worst case scenario, I own seven NFTs and you have to make me 420 boxes of yeah. anarchy every year. I said, are you okay with that? It's not a bad deal. He goes, I'm all right with that. And I said, we're good to go. Because even in a catastrophic scenario where this doesn't pan out and retailers don't get excited to see the value, that it'll exist annually in still a small dose and we'll just have seven units. But I don't see it happening. I think it's going to be very successful. And like I said, I'm just kind of excited that now I have an annual year where I could work 60 boxes of this. For me. That's really why you did or, this. Or 420. <laughs> You're like, I know. Yeah, or 420. <laughs> I, I, yeah, right? This, this I kind Which, of, by the way, is, is actually lower than the factory minimum. Really? Like, if you think about, do the math on 420 boxes per year, it's actually less than what we're looking for for factory minimums. In Miami, it's a lot different, but in Nicaragua, we're looking at factory minimums of like 10,000 cigars for a small batch run yeah so this sits kind of below that that level eventually what i want to do is probably make two years at a time so i have the cigars resting um maybe even three years of inventory just sitting there waiting for them to be boxed up because everything we do has a box date stamp on it mm -hmm. the date stamp uh is the date stamp when the boxes were finished like when they were actually packed doesn't mean the cigars couldn't have been sitting around for a couple of years before that. Right. So now I, I tell you what's really interesting in, in the years I've worked with Pete, right? Pete's really more concerned with taking care of the consumers than most people realize. So for instance, when we did the original anarchy, I don't know if you remember this or not even, but Pete had a, a, a stipulation that he set that he wanted to work around this project. I'm like, I don't have a problem with it. But his concern was he wanted to make this cigar, especially when I gave him the number, because 
one of his problems at the time was he was making these projects and not everybody was able to get them. Yeah. Right? And it was constantly like we couldn't find these. So when I was said I wanted 1,500 of these things, he's like, really? So he knew he wasn't going to have that problem, but his, set, his concern was, I'd like to keep this under a $10 retail. And that's what he said to me. He's like, I, I want this priced right so people get. And that's one of the things his concern was in doing his project was he didn't want to make enough every year. We, we were going back and forth on the math where it would be available, but still a rarity. And it would have value to people who either were able to get one or one of, whether you were a consumer and got one yeah. or whether you were one of the guys, uh, retailers or consumers who own an NFT and got the scars. He really wanted to keep it at a level where the excitement was still there every year, but it just wasn't prolifically out there where it wasn't not yeah. a big deal. Right, anymore. it wasn't an offensive $25 yes. cigar. Right. Like, well, the price point definitely is different now uh, compared to, what, 13 years ago? But Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, it, it was really 13 years ago, and um, this is... But it was definitely a conscious thing to make sure that once it gets through the auction process and eventually to the consumer, that they're they're not going crazy trying to pay you know fifty sixty dollars. They I mean they might. We never know what uh, what this NFT project is going to do. But originally it was like let's try to get it to the NFT owner first at a at a reasonable price point. Yeah, and we'll see from there. Yeah, one of the things is, as me as one of the owners of NFT is I'm going to watch what the other six people do. You know, Are they at liberty to sell it at whatever price they want? Yeah, I mean, it, it, listen, at the end yeah. of the day, it's a capital market. It's yeah. a free market. So, you know, I mean. So there's no set I MSRP think we, or. I think, no, I think we put in the press release, these are going to be, I think, $14 cigars to the NFT owners. Um, and then they have to market it as, as well. But what I don't plan on doing with the one I own is is set the standard, right? I, if, if the market yeah. has a bear that the other six NFT owners are moving their cigars and consumers are happy with purchasing, I will probably just follow suit and come in and say, hey, I'm setting the line because once again, I didn't bid on the cigars. So it's, yeah. I'm paying for the cigars like everybody else, but I didn't have to yes. bid, bid on the <laughs> NFT project. Yeah, no, I, I, I get invoiced. Well, I mean, technically you did because you put in a bunch of money up front that you don't know you're gonna recover, especially with SD DuMont lighters. Well, th listen, those are going to be one of the probably most collectible DuPont yeah. lighters yeah. ever. I mean, they're one of one Tetsuahe branded with all original art. No one's taking a hit on ST DuPont line two collectible lighter. Yeah, and when you, when, when you were showing us the art, uh, when we were signing the NDA, we were just, everybody had their own favorite. Like nobody was just like, that one's the best. Like everyone was like, oh, that one's the best. No, that one, that one. Yeah, that's where I'm curious when it comes to the auction, whether or not, there's there you know when people start seeing the different artworks whether or not they're going to be like no i need to have number six yeah or i need to have number five that 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 will be really interesting to watch the the the, uh, the people bidding on it to see what they're more excited about yeah it's i mean it's hard to choose i mean i'm partial to number four but i would be happy so i like number be happy one, with obviously. number five <laughs> number it, one it's pretty funny because everybody does have a different opinion when I looked at which piece of art that I was going to take and not put in the selection process, I went with the most basic one, which was our original just A art. Yeah. That was what was on the box and whatever. So I just, for me, that's the epitome of the, the thing. But in my opinion, the least exciting of the art pieces, right? Because that really wasn't as intricate as some of these other pieces. So Do you have the hand around? It's probably yeah, not the, the, here. The hand's but, my favorite. I don't know, know what number it is, but yeah. that, that's got to be my favorite. Yeah. yeah, we'll we'll have like a B roll piece on yeah. this video. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, when he says the hand, you could show it to him. Yeah. But because um, I'm taking all these down to shoot them all. But yeah, there's five here. There's two pieces not shown: the hand and I think the ga the mask. Maybe we won't show it. Just create a little bit more intrigue. You could. Yeah. That's right? up to you. <laughs> That's up to you. The more people show up for the auction, be like, I, I'm not even going to buy it, but I want to see the other two pieces. <laughs> Look, it's for me. It's super exciting. There, I was telling my wife this the other day that there are milestone moments in my career. You know, whether it be the Great Smoke or, or the Digital Experience or um, the original Anarchy release, there, there have been defining moments where I think I've thought past what I thought was the boundaries of kind of doing something cool. And I, I believe, and it, we won't know until August, but I believe this is going to be a, a milestone moment in my career to have come up with this project, to be able to work with Pete and Pete being allowing me to be so liberal to really 
kind of put this package together and then coming up on his end with some awesome looking stuff. Even the band, you know I mean? He went on his own in stuff that I didn't even think about discussing with him because the band pays homage, the cigar band pays homage to the original yeah. Anarchy label. But it has holographic foil on the trim. And the, then also the, the bands that are made for the humidors are slightly different than the bands that are in the boxes. Oh, so, so these are one-off bands in here. Yes. Oh, it keeps getting more interesting. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, there's 75 times seven of them. So there's, you know, very few bands with this label. Luckily, I mean, when you go to a band maker and you say, well, I need, I need 600 of one band. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're like, what? 600. <laughs> okay. That's, that's, you know, this much per band. And then, oh, but I need 40,000 of the other band because the other bands, I actually made more bands to make sure that I had them for a long period of time because I, I, I expect this thing to go on for a long time, regardless of whether or not Abe is the only one that has them or there's seven people that do have them. I expect people to be buying them over the next 10 years. So I made enough bands for 10 years worth of production uh, just so I had them. Yeah. It doesn't make sense to make, you know, every year the allotment of 6,000 bands. Right. Uh, you end up getting stuck with a big fat bill on, on paper yeah. for no reason. So Plus, you don't want the band makers to be like, oh, shit, Pete's calling again. Yeah. <laughs> it's no another run of me. 400. <laughs> during, during these times, I call them a lot just to see if they have leftover bands. Not, not of Anarchy product, but my own product. Yeah. Because, you know, we're running into a, a still an issue with printing uh, bands in the industry and... I don't even have bands that are going on certain projects in the trade show. Luckily, they were able to do these. They were delivered. These bands were delivered to Nicaragua uh, last week. Wow. Not last week. Sorry. The week before. And they packed one box up and shipped it to Miami. One box of that. One box of that. I, I'm actually hoping they have the right bands on. <laughs> well, well, look. <laughs> we got to open that up. And look. But what, what's, what's, what's cool about P2 is he also thinks like that, right? So if you have an original box of Anarchy from 2010... The bands are different than the Redux we did in 2015. So you can tell along the line what cigar was from really which lineage of anarchy. So th th this band, this box here, which is homage to the original box, but it has the words NFT edition on it. So you'll but, know. But actually it's a cross because the original box was a lid, a lid box. It was, it was a hinged box. Yeah, hinged right. box. This is more like the chaos box. Yes. Um, but obviously with the original size because the chaos was a different uh, a different size altogether and these bands have nft on them yeah but on these bands the the top where it says anarchy is actually kind of like a, a white color green color up top yeah i saw the pictures with That's red right. and then uh holographic foil at the bottom but on these they're holographic on top and yeah red. so it's really kind of cool because you can really know where the cigar came from and that's really kudos to him because he's the one who put all that thought into it I, I've been like that so since day one because when we did the original Anarchy, I had a very simple, like, I wanted just the A to pop. And then the rest of the imagery is all blind and boss, so you can see it, but you, you can't really see it. Yeah. And if you're, you have to feel it more than anything. Right. But when we came out with a second run of them back in 2015 of the original Anarchy size, I said, no, we got to do a different band because I don't want people trading the new ones as old ones because if i just use the original band someone could easily just say oh yeah it's the original cigar right so even with everything that i do if i ever do a redux there's always a slight twist to the packaging or to the band to make sure that person the person can't say oh i have the original right that way there's no there's there's no confusion there's no confusion you can confuse maybe the layman but not not the guy that's in the know that's really hunting these down yeah all right. Is there anything else you want to talk about this project? Um, so by the time this releases, if you go to tatuaheanarchy.com. Um, One word, tatuaheanarchy.com. Tatuaheanarchy.com is actually the site that we built in 2011. 2010. 2010. But, you know, it's, it's still it, there. <laughs> it, it's been revamped a couple of times because obviously as the new lineages have come out, it's changed. But that's the, actually the URL that had the rolling globe on it. If you go there, there'll be links for the Discord chat. There'll be a Discord chat for this, um, and there'll be information. I think people can see all the NFT art, too. That'll be up by the time this airs. They'll be able to see it. So that's kind of the hub of where all the information will be on this project. It's right. whyanarchy.com. And this is 
the original Nicaraguan blend with Ecuadorian wrapper. Yeah, Habano, yeah. And the, the Pale Horse is actually Connecticut, Ecuador. Very so, nice. Again, there's a whopping, uh, what? 15 <laughs> times 7, seven yeah. 105. 105 cigars. 105 of the Pale Horse, and that's yeah. it. Not happening again. Pretty cool. That's the very few cigars. So, like, here I am. I'm a retailer. I'm sitting here. I'm excited about this project. So, this is, I think, what's going to make this a really successful project is it's it's a lot more than just, hey, this is a non-fungible token. and We're going to bring you some epic cigars. So we, we've, we've incorporated a lot of cool components that really make this not only a collectible piece for anybody, but, you know, has the accessibility to a pretty epic cigar, in my opinion. It so. sounds pretty epic. It sounds like a very exciting project. You heard it first here on Republican Debauchery. Thank you for allowing us to do this because we're an unknown entity in the industry, really. Well, so thanks for being really here. really appreciate it. Yeah. Um, and guys, go to com and start learning more because in August, have your wallets ready. All right. What's up, my debaucherous friends? We are here with a super special project with Pete Johnson, Abe Abda, Abda, Abda. Debabna. Debabna. I'm going to start over then. Close. <laughs> Close. Wow. What's that? <laughs> All right. What is up, my debaucherous friends? We're here with a super special video, an amazing project. It's kind of mind blowing. We're here with the famous Pete Johnson, the rock star, and Abe Debida, owner of Smoke In. Are you serious? Or are you kidding? I'm not. Was that a joke? No. <laughs> it's phonetic. It's three syllables. Debabna. Da De De babna. Debabna. D A is one word. B A B. No. I'm just gonna say Abe from Smoke In, is that cool? I'm cool with that too. Okay. Just say Honest Abe from Smoke In. I'm alright with that Abe too. Honest Abe from Smoke That's In. That's it. Alright. There you go. What is up, my debaucherous <laughs> friends? <laughs> That's a great out B-roll right there. I'll put it at the end of the video. <laughs> right. 